Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Mike McAvoy. Today I want to talk about application and use of CPAP. CPAP now has disposable devices from many different manufacturers, so it's much more accessible. We know that we could save a lot of lives with CPAP. The application of CPAP, though, requires some pre-planning, some thought, and probably some training so that you actually can do it effectively when it's necessary to apply. The first thing I want to talk about with CPAP is the selection of the mask. Most CPAP units, disposable CPAP units, come with a single-sized adult mask. Everybody's face is different. You need to carry additional size masks, and oftentimes a smaller mask than the device actually comes with. There are three points that you want to look at when you're considering application of the mask to the patient. The first point is the lower part of the face where the chin clefts just below the lip. That's where the mask should initially sit on the patient. The second point are the two corners of the mouth, which both need to be covered by the mask. And the third is where the cartilage and the nasal bone intersect on the patient. So the mask should hit all three of those points and cover all three of those points. If it's too large and you see the mask getting into the patient's eyes or the mask doesn't adequately size the two corners of the mouth, you need to pick a different size mask. If you don't have a good mask, you're not going to get a good seal with CPAP and it will be ineffective. You can't apply it to the patient and actually gain some clinical benefit from it. So we're going to set up this CPAP, and then I want to talk about the two most important things about CPAP. The two things you need to keep in mind with CPAP that are critical to it working effectively are selling it to the patient and knowing when to quit when it's not working. So when we talk about selling it to the patient, we're actually going to talk to the patient about the benefits of solving their difficulty breathing with a device that really sounds somewhat scary. When we set up this device, we're going to look at what the manufacturer recommends for flow rate. On this particular device, it says on it, 10 liters per minute is what's going to flow through this. So we'll attach it to the oxygen. We'll connect it to the actual CPAP device. And you have a choice of pressures that you're starting at. So we're administering CPAP in centimeters of water pressure. Typically, we would start CPAP somewhere between 8 and 10 centimeters of water pressure. You need to look at your local protocols and say, where do you recommend that we start the CPAP? So lower pressures are used initially because of the uncomfortable nature of CPAP. If you were to put high pressure on somebody instantly, they're not going to do well with keeping the mask on. So we'll start at a low pressure, 5, 8, maybe 10 centimeters of water pressure. In this case, I'll set the device at seven and a half centimeters of water pressure. I'll plug the oxygen tubing into the CPAP device. I'll turn the device on to the 10 liters a minute that it says to use. And then I'll attach it to the mask. Now, selling CPAP to the patient in the sense of having them use this device probably is best done by handing it to the patient and asking the patient to put the mask on their face initially. So you talk to the patient, you coach them, you help them to relax with the CPAP in place, and once they feel somewhat comfortable holding it themselves, you can then take the helmet or the accessory straps that hold the mask on and attach that to the patient. This is somewhat tricky. These things come packaged in a very loose fashion. And ultimately, you want this to be able to hold the mask on the patient so that they can breathe adequately and have a seal where you're not feeling gas escaping from any of the parts around the mask. Now the mask has a vent where you are gonna feel gas escaping from the mask because you don't want to asphyxiate the patient should the gas suddenly stop flowing for some reason or another. Now the next question is, what actually helps with assessing when you should stop using CPAP? So we should see a couple things. We should see a decreased respiratory rate. We should see an increase in oxygen saturations on the patient. We should see 
a decrease in work of breathing. And how do you measure work of breathing? Well, I asked the patient on a scale of one to 10, is your breathing getting better or is your breathing getting worse? We should see a decrease in end tidal CO2. And if you're actually looking at end tidal waveforms, you should actually see a decrease in the alpha angle of the end tidal waveform. So those are all measurements that would help us to tell that CPAP is actually working on the patient. After about 20 minutes, and 20 minutes is a reasonable period of time, if those numbers aren't changing in your benefit, you may try increasing the pressure over that 20 minute period of time. But after 20 minutes, if you've maximized your therapy, you're at as much pressure as the patient can tolerate, and you're not getting anywhere, it's time to stop using CPAP and go to some other form of respiratory support. Now I'm gonna take this off the patient for a second and talk a little bit about what you can do to monitor the individual. We have a mask on this patient that the CPAP was attached to, and I want to somehow measure end tidal carbon dioxide. Keep in mind that the flow that we're getting out of this mask is in the hundred of liters per minute. So we attach this to a device that's a Venturi device that's flowing into this mask, and we're actually getting a flow probably somewhere around 160 liters per minute coming through here, which is pulling atmospheric air in and not giving us 100% oxygen concentration. In fact, we're probably only getting about 30% oxygen concentration. And while somebody with some significant respiratory distress might improve with the pressure that's being applied, they could need more oxygen. So your option for administering oxygen in that setting, in addition to what's coming through the CPAP, would be to put a cannula on the patient. And I have here an end tidal cannula that's a monitor device, but can also administer oxygen to the patient through the monitoring device. So we'll put this on the patient in the same fashion as we would a nasal cannula, and we'll apply the mask over this cannula. Now, a couple things. You notice that this has a pillow a nasal pillow that measures what comes out of the mouth and allows you to look at end tidal monitoring with what's exhaled from the patient. If you're going to measure end tidal using CPAP, you have to have that pillow over the mouth on the device that you're using or the gas flow is gonna dilute or wash out the carbon dioxide that you get from the patient. So the mask can sit over this. You'll see that there's obviously going to be a small leak on each side where the cannula comes out from underneath the mask. You don't want to tighten the mask too much on the patient's face because you'll cause leaks in other areas. That leak is adequate to still provide the pressure that you need on the patient. We can deliver extra oxygen through this device to the patient. We can measure their end tidal and we can actually see improvement or not lack of improvement in the patient as we administer the CPAP. So that's a monitoring technique for somebody who you're giving CPAP to when you're using a disposable device that doesn't give you any other capability to monitor it. So those are some tips for use of CPAP. Those are some things that you should consider. Remember that it's important to sell it to the patient, to allow the patient to feel comfortable with it. People who are in acute pulmonary edema who we use CPAP on will improve within seconds of applying it to them. Some of the other conditions that we treat, such as asthma or exacerbation of COPD, may take some time for the CPAP to actually work. So those are some thoughts about using CPAP. Definitely something that you want to practice and try CPAP yourself so that you can see how it actually feels as an individual using it. Get some sense of what your patients are going through. Thanks for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Mike McAvoy. Be smart out there.